This is Three Men in a Mystery. I'm John Lorden. I'm Mike Morford. And I'm Gray Hughes. Well, fellas, a big welcome back. Here we are, season three. But before we dive into season three's case, we've got some updates on season one, Road to Justice, and season two, Silenced. Gray, you want to tell us what's going on with season one? Yeah, in season one, we detail the story of two teenagers, J.B. Beasley and Tracy Howlett, that were brutally murdered and left in the trunk of a car on the side of an Alabama road. Collie McCraney was arrested and charged for the crimes and has now been detained for over a year. His original trial date was February 2nd of 2020. It was pushed back to May 4th, and it still hasn't occurred. We reached out to Andrew Scarborough, one of McCraney's defense attorneys, for an update, and he let us know that as of July 2020, there still is no trial date set. It's kind of unbelievable. I mean, you know, I, I, I get that uh, we're talking about a guy that potentially murdered two teenage girls, um, but to have a trial date already set for February, and I know these things get pushed around, have it pushed back to May. And of course, this year has been bizarre for everyone. But at this point, it's like, yeah, we just don't have any date. I, I'm just like, I'm kind of blown away by that. So it's always amazing how long sometimes these trials take to actually happen. Yeah. You know, you have a trial date set and then it seems like sometimes three or four years later, it finally makes it to trial. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. More if you want to give us an update on season two. Yeah. In season two, we looked at a case in Minneapolis. Did Elisa Gomez end her own life or was it a staged homicide? During the season, we met investigator John Bishop, who wanted to help the family by reinvestigating her case and presenting his findings to the medical examiner. His hopes were to get the manner of death changed to homicide, and we will have an update soon on the medical examiner's response in a future episode. Yeah, I'm very curious to see what happens with this. I'm telling you, this John Bishop guy, he's like a pit bull. He was just moving on this since we met him, and he hasn't stopped. We ended our season. He kept going. I really hope that we see something good for Elisa's family in all this. That's good news. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, Of course, that brings us to season three, a season that we're calling Tattooed Tears, the story of Allison Watterson. We have a new mystery to dig into together. Please know that this is being produced with the cooperation of Allison Watterson's mother, Misty. She's desperately seeking answers. And with your help, we're going to do our best to raise exposure to the case, highlight the important unanswered questions, and hopefully shake loose some tips that can help move this investigation forward. On today's episode, we're going to learn about where this case takes place and hear from Misty and a close friend named Maddie about who Allison is and a bit about her boyfriend, Ben, or ex-boyfriend. We'll see. We're going to learn much more about all that. Our mystery this season takes us to the West Coast. If you take U.S. Route 26 West to the outskirts of Portland, Oregon, you'll find North Plains, a small rural community only about one square mile in total size with a population of just under 2,000 people. Now, one of the three men is very familiar with Oregon. Gray, uh, you've been to this area a few times. Can you give us some of your insights and impressions about North Plains? Yeah, it's uh, it's actually kind of unusual out there. It's very hilly. It's a very, I mean, really high hills and, and homes placed amongst the hills and uh, wooded in between the homes and then there's very nice mansions and new built homes and then these i would call them almost like dilapidated buildings with like 40 cars strewn around in the yard yeah so it's it's interesting to see that you have these really nice homes and then these homes that are are really in disrepair but have just been there for a very very long time uh, what about in terms of the geography? Is this is this like a mountainous area? Is it just hills? Is there tons of brush? Well, it's, it just seems like it's getting it's really hilly, leading into um, you know there's a forested area that sort of leads off to the coast, basically. But it's just it's very hilly, and um, I mean even uh, when I was I was actually out there on um, Christmas Eve with my drone trying to help out a little bit. And it was just amazing how low you'd have to fly it and how high over here to be looking around and in just different areas. It was, it was unbelievable. Gotcha. Uh, Well, travel Oregon.com states 
century-old North Plains proudly retains a small-town feel full of family fun. Pick the perfect jack-o'-lantern at the pumpkin patch in autumn and whiz through the Pumpkin Ridge Zip Tour any time of year. Hit the greens at the nationally renowned golf course or catch a bluegrass show at Horning's Hideout. Now, while life sounds simple and easy in North Plains, in late 2019, things got very complicated with one person going missing and another person would wind up in jail. In nearby Hillsboro, a city of more than 90,000 people and over 25 square miles large, Allison Watterson was a bright and beautiful 20-year-old trying to figure out her future. Her mother, Misty, told Gray more about Allison. Allison is a very kind, loving, free spirit. She loves love and she celebrates love and she loves her family. She absolutely loves her friends. She's got a million friends, um, you know, from all walks of life. And she, she loves them all very dearly. She's got tons of best friends and she always has. When she's a little girl, she... Um, you know, she would try and do sleepovers with her friends, but she you knows her and I are really close and she'd always, mom, you got to come pick me up. And she wouldn't be able to make it because she just needed to come home and be with her mom. So not until she was about 12 years old and she finally was able to actually do a, a overnight sleepover the whole night. So every time she went over to a friend's house, I was like, just waiting for the phone call. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, she's, she, you know, wants to travel and she loves animals. She sticks up for the people that are, you know, anyone would be picking on. You know, she advocates for, you know, homeless, you know, mentally ill um, veterans. You know, she's a she's an advocate for people that may be less fortunate in life. And she's always sticking up for them. And, um, you know, she always helps me see the more human side of people. And, um, you know, she's just, she's a great, a really great, wonderful human being. And she, I'm just, I miss her just so deeply. Standing at five foot seven and weighing around 120 pounds, you might catch Allison with brown hair with auburn highlights or with her hair dyed black or possibly even with her hair dyed teal, her blue eyes complementing each whimsical color choice. She had even more color on her right arm where a bright tattoo of a fairy hovered above a spider web. Her other tattoo would certainly get a lot of stares and even stare back. Near her left shoulder was an eye with thick lashes, but several of the lower lashes had thick black liquid tears. Some people might interpret her tattoos to point towards a past of troubled relationships. Some people might say maybe that's the future. Let's learn more about Allison from one of our closest childhood friends, Maddie. So I met Allison in the fifth grade in Mr. Geyer's class and um, everyone else was having sleepovers and I saw her and I walked up to her and I asked her if she wanted to have a sleepover before I even knew her name. <laughs> and um, she just kind of smiled at me and she told me yes and she talked to her mom and I talked to my mom and we got it all set up. Um, she came over to my house for the first time, um, her first sleepover, I think. And she was trying really hard to spend the night and she was very nervous. So we played and we stayed up really late. And then she, um, she really wanted to go home. She really missed her mom. She was, a real, she really loved her mom. And, um, she went home and we tried again for the next weekend and we had an absolute blast over at her house and we listened to music and danced and I, I found, you know, my best friend. And, um, after that we had sleepovers every single weekend, every all summer long. It felt like we lived with each other for a while. We were really into littlest pet shops. Um, Allie really loved animals. She she had birds and hamsters and all various animals like in real life while we were kids. And I was always really terrified of the birds, but she got me to hold them anyway. <laughs> 
Um, but we played Littlest Pet Shops and we had a collection of them and I would always bring my little, little like doll houses essentially over to her house with all my little animals. And we'd, we'd play like if we were college students and all our animals were in college <laughs> and, you know, we'd make them date and we'd make them be best friends and we'd, we'd give them little voices and just play with them. I, she was, she was really good. She always was the really popular girl and she was always really cute. And I remember she would do the little hair flip on like this little dog, even though the hair didn't move, you know? (laughs) And, um, she, um, she taught me how to be really brave and she was always very fun loving and weird with me. We did weird stuff together. She, um, encouraged me to wear makeup she encouraged me to go out and walk and get to various stores like plaid pantry we would walk for hours just to go to the store and when we made it there we only had a few dollars but we always shared and we always made the best of every situation together and we would um sing and dance and do dance offs in her living room and sing as loud as we can to every song we could and um you know be weird just make weird noises and just have fun and just have a blast with just each other it was it was great not having to worry about what we were going to do because we would just interact with each other and that was enough to keep us so entertained one time we went camping with my family and I got to bring two friends. I got to bring one of my other friends, Talina, and I got to bring Allison. And, um, you know, we would stay up all night and, you know, you can hear your mom from the other tent going, Hey girls, shut up, go to sleep. But it didn't matter. And I remember us, um, we left the tent in the middle of the night and we were walking around the trail of the forest and we, we had like little flashlights and we ended up like sleeping in a trail, (laughs) which is super silly, but we were sleeping in a trail because we just got tired and we just laid down and it, there was flowers near us and it was just really, it was really nice. And she made me feel really comfortable, even though I was, I was totally scared of all the bugs. (laughs) She was like, no, it's okay. We'll just go to sleep. And, when we woke up, we went back and, um, we got in so much trouble. I remember we all had to sit in separate tents and we all were really scolded for leaving the tents in the middle of the night. And, um, when we were driving back home, we were listening to Katy Perry and we were just talking about Katy Perry for like five hours, which I know Allie really liked Katy Perry (laughs) and I did too. You know, we both, we really, tried to find out as much as we could about her. And it was, it was really great. That's that I always think of Allison whenever I hear any Katy Perry songs come on or anything like that, even though we fought sometimes she was always back. She was always there for me and I was always there for her. And as we grew up, we kind of, you know, got into new friend groups and, um, we, um, we got into new friend groups and we, kind of grew apart a little, but every time we got together, she knew me down to my core and we could always be ourselves together. And it would be like, we hadn't seen each other in months and we got together and it was like we were with each other every day. It was really special. She introduced me to lots of kind and sweet people. Um, She really opened me up from the weird kid that I was. She really allowed me to be myself and embraced me and Without her, I definitely wouldn't be the person I am today. Well, obviously, uh, a very big influence on Maddie's life. And I, for me personally, um, hearing Maddie talk about that they found a way to just be weird together, that they kind of just got each other, um, really reminds me of some of the best relationships I had as a child growing up, too. You know, you feel like you're kind of an outsider and all of a sudden you find this person that gets you and all those weird quirky things that you laugh about with yourself in a mirror in your bathroom or something like that. You're now sharing with someone and they're having fun with it and getting it too. I think that's such a special thing. Did you guys have any other insights on that interview? 
Yeah. Well, I felt very similar to that. It's very rare uh, to have a friend like that. Yeah. It's not, uh, you, you might only find one or two like that in your life where you can literally be your actual self the whole time and they get it and it, they love it and it is funny and fun for both of you the whole time. And you just know each other, like she said, to the core. More, yeah, to, to me it sounded like Allison could be anyone's daughter or sister. Just uh, sounds like she's out there having fun, making uh, her friendships uh, real and, and just hanging out, having fun. And I think hearing her say that they didn't have a lot of money, but they would still walk to the store and, and uh, buy what they could just to, to do something together. Uh, I think it really says a lot about her. I really appreciate that Maddie uh, did this interview and thank you, Gray, for reaching out and, and making that interview happen. It's one thing to hear about someone uh, from their mother who's certainly going to have one type of perspective, but I think Maddie gave us a, a bit of a different insight there and I, I really appreciate that. Well, I was going to add one more thing to that is I, I thought it was really neat and obvious that Allison has affected the lives of many people. Yeah. And actually, you know, change people for the better in their minds. Yeah, absolutely. And hearing from her mother that, you know, she's she's an advocate for others. I mean, Allison is probably the type of person that would wind up, um, you know, supporting our shows or maybe even making one of her own to help others. We'll be right back after this commercial break. My name is John Lorden, and I've been looking into hundreds of unsolved mysteries over the past five years on my YouTube channel, Lorden Arts. And I've been known to bring a respectful, victim-focused approach to the stories that I cover while donating thousands of dollars directly to those cases and the charities that help them. Now, I'm bringing that approach and sensibility, along with some of the biggest mysteries I've ever looked into and some new ones, to a weekly podcast called Seriously Mysterious. From bizarre occurrences to unsolved murders and unexplainable disappearances, everything is fair game on this show as long as it's Seriously Mysterious. Seriously Mysterious debuts in September 2020. You can find Seriously Mysterious on your favorite podcatchers or by visiting seriouslymysterious.com. Let's look into the mysterious together. Welcome back, and please keep in mind that our sponsors are helping us raise funds that will go towards investigating this case further, so please show them the same support that they're showing us. So Allison had also recently ended a relationship with her boyfriend, Benjamin Garland, but they were still in contact, according to her mother, Misty. Benjamin Garland's Facebook page looks like it tells the story of an all-American kid with a loving family. From his graduation day photo where he's deciding whether or not to wear a top hat to complaining about family trips to the beach to talking about his favorite rap artists and quoting 50 cent lyrics, his family appears to be in regular contact and supporting him every step of the way. His profile says he lives in Hillsboro, Oregon and attended Faith Bible Christian School and graduated from high school in 2013. I haven't been able to find any occupations listed for him. Uh, we've also asked Misty, and she's not aware of him having a job. On Facebook, it says that he works at Middle Earth, which is an obvious reference to the Lord of the Rings series. He's into musical artists Chief Keef, Tupac, Jimi Hendrix, and Tribal Seeds, and it appears that he also likes the Assassin's Creed line of video games. Of course, life can be much more complex than our Facebook profile show. Allison and Ben met in high school and eventually dated... But according to Allison's mother, Misty, things weren't going smoothly between them in December of 2019. When she started, you know, seeing him, um, she was very honest with me that he had some, you know, struggles and addiction. And um, she also told me that he was supposed to go to treatment. He had like, he was in trouble with the law, but the way he was going to take care of that was um, he was going to go to treatment for a year and then his legal troubles would be like over with. So, and I truly believe that that's what she thought. Um, you know, I look at what his charges are now and I'm like, 
there's no way they would just send him to treatment for those things. So um, I don't believe he was honest with her about that because she said to me several times, like, he's going to go to treatment. You know, I believe in him. I, you know, I believe, you know, I think that we could be happy together if, you know, he takes care of this, this issue. And, you know, so she stayed with him for a couple of months and then um, she broke up with him. And I, I remember reading the message that she sent him. She doesn't know I read it. I was just being protective of her. So anyway, so I wrote, I saw what she wrote to him and she had stated that, you know, she, she knows he can do better. She knows that he, she knows he needs help. Um, and she really encouraged him to go to treatment, take care of that stuff so they could be together. And she said that she deserved a better life and she, he deserved a better life. You know, that, that's not the road that she wanted to go down and she didn't want that for him either. So, you know, and then her, you know, her breakup message was very loving and wasn't mean. It was, you know, it broke her heart to do it, but she was smart enough to know what was right and what was not. That was sent a week before she went missing. Ben asked Allison to join him at a party in North Plains on Friday, December 20th, 2019. There was going to be a barbecue, but Misty was very direct with us when we all interviewed her together that she was aware there could be drugs at the party as well. Looking through Allison's Facebook, it's pretty clear that she was around marijuana often as we've been trying to learn more about where the party was being held and the type of people who were there. We've been told that it's very possible someone there could have been providing other drugs, including meth. Why would Allison go to a party with her ex-boyfriend? Misty isn't sure either. Why she decided to all of a sudden change her mind and go be with him that weekend. Who, who knows? So I was reading some of the messages because all of a sudden the messages from him stopped even after the breakup thing. And then I realized that he went under a different name and they were messaging back and forth a little bit. And he just, you know, asked her, like, do you want to come to this barbecue, this, this um, thing with, at my friend's house? you know, he's like, I really miss you. And she's like, I miss you too. And yeah, just friends getting together, having like a, I guess a barbecue and a bonfire and, um, you know, just kind of hanging out. I mean, she wasn't, I think it was just an opportunity for her to hang out with him. And so she was willing to go because I wasn't allowing him in our house. So it wasn't like she could just be like, Oh, we'll just come over. Interesting about, and I know people make different Facebook profiles kind of for different things, but Gray, did you get any sense why he had created a new Facebook profile? Was there like a private one and then one for his family? Um, I actually do not know why he had a second profile like that, but it is, it always is a little bit alarming when you see somebody with three or four profiles in some of these cases that we look at. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And obviously, the one that I reviewed was kind of, you know, the family version. Admittedly, the types of updates that I saw on there seemed to kind of trail off over the past few years. It was really kind of his high school years that were focused on that profile. So it seems like maybe he moved to a different one. Uh, I guess it's other... possible. Well, I was going to say, maybe it's possible that um, she blocked him because apparently they weren't getting along right at the end there. And then he created a new account to communicate with her and then she didn't block that one. And he was able to say the right things to get back into good graces. Hmm. Morph, what do you think? Well, I don't know. I, I'm trying not to get a, a preconceived notion of this guy. It's like shades of season two. Yeah. Um, although it, it seems like Allison sensed, Hey, I need to cut this off because this isn't where I want to be. And um, I know he can do better and until he do does better you know I, I don't think i should be with him so it, it sounds like she was uh sticking to her guns at the same time uh being young being in love with someone uh not wanting to be alone i could see her missing him and wanting to see him and going to this party and you and i all three of us i'm sure have been to the parties when you get there uh things can get out of hand uh Things go around that uh, you might go there with the best intentions of not trying. Um, so it's it, it can be a dangerous environment. Yeah. And we've all been there, right? Like everybody's been in a relationship where you're dating, things don't go right, and you break up even, quote, officially 
But then literally four or five days later, you know, they get back a hold of you again or you get a hold of them and things work out and you see them for a while again. But eventually sometimes it doesn't end up working out. But um, I think it's really common, to be honest. Yeah, especially at, at 20 years old. I mean, <laughs> right. I was already married at 20. So, yeah, yeah. We, we, we sometimes <laughs> have impulse uh, or, do, or don't make the the best decisions for ourselves. And then, of course, if you're talking about a party environment, if there is alcohol, if there is marijuana, you have inhibitions that are being lowered um, by substances as well. So, yeah, all kinds of stuff can happen. Did so, you just say, John, that you uh, made bad decisions by getting married to your wife at 20 years old? Yeah, my ex-wife. Oh, yeah, ex-wife. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, you're editing this out. I just sort of throw See, that. See, you actually not. knew I that. Might, I might leave it in, actually. <laughs> I think you should leave that in. I think you should. It's a, um, it's a real, genuine type, you know. Yeah. It's a no, genuine that's, story. So. That's the real deal. Misty did tell us that Allison was determined to get her life on track, and she even lined up a big job interview for the following Monday. Maybe that's why she felt like she should go out and celebrate a bit that weekend. Maybe she was giving Ben another shot. I asked Misty what her impressions were of Ben. I only saw them together a couple of times and, um, you know, after because I wasn't allowing him over here and it was kind of under, you know, I had caught him over here. So I was very angry and um, kind of yelling at, you know, him and her and, um, you know, she would try and like be like, mom, like you know, argue. And he would just be like, Elson, like, just chill out. Just let her say her piece, you know, um, trying to like calm. He did try and calm the situation down as he was like getting his stuff together. But, um, you know, he knew I was angry. And, um, so I never really saw them together. You know, she, she did love him a lot. She really did. She tried to see the good in him. You know, she, she tried to see the good in sometimes the most vile of people and that would be him you know i've heard stories from people and about just kind of his character and you know there's been red flags going up for years in fact her friend megan wrote a poem for allison called red flags and it was about her relationship with ben we've had several people say that when they were together um you know, he treated her good. He was loving towards her, made sure she had everything she needed. Um, she had told me that she'd never felt so loved by somebody before. And that's why she really wanted to him to get help so that they could have a relationship. She felt loved by him. None of that matters to me because he brought her to North Plains. He invited her out there. She'd never been there before. And he left her there. However, he left her there. Whatever happened, he left her there. So a couple of definite warning signs that I'm hearing in there. Sounds like there was enough of a problem that Misty didn't want him around the house. Um, we have heard there's some previous mention that he's got some types of charges. We're going to dedicate a future episode to going through his criminal history and, and look into all that as well. Um, Essentially, what happens is at 4 p.m. that Friday, Allison leaves home. Misty keeps in regular contact with her for the rest of that evening through Facebook Messenger. Allison decides to stay over at the party for the night, and then that seems to even turn into staying over for the weekend. The last message that Misty would get from Allison was at 8.30 on Sunday, December 22nd, 2019, and that's 8.30 a.m. So, guys, we've heard a bit about Allison. We've heard a little bit about Ben. What are your impressions of them and what's going on here? It seems like a, a typical younger couple, uh, maybe not mature in some ways, uh, fighting through things that kids that, that age have to deal with quite a bit. Um, so that always complicates or adds another layer to a relationship. But it, it sounds like at least Allison uh, had good plans, things she wanted to do and a vision of what she wanted to be in the future. And, and she was willing to, to perhaps give up this relationship if it, if it didn't uh, lead to that vision she had for her life. Definitely some shades of season two. It seems like Allison is the type of person that is willing to look past someone's flaws uh, 
and and maybe unlike season two, she tried to uh, cut herself off from that, and because she had a, a vision of what she wanted in her life, and she didn't want that stuff to be part of it. So uh, it, it seems like it's a typical young uh, romance. Uh, and and they want to see each other and spend time with each other, but at the same time, it seems like Allison definitely has a a long view of of what she wants for herself. Yeah, it. I definitely was thinking of that too. That uh, season two, how Elisa was, would try to change um, her Brad. boyfriend at the or Brad at the yeah. yeah Brad would try to change Brad and get him to be a better person. But sometimes you you know you can't uh, you know, teach an old dog new tricks basically, um, and it's it's interesting that uh, Missy wouldn't allow him into the home, and then he was in there on an, on an occasion and it led to a fight, and then he tried to Ben tried to you know moderate the fight there, which is sort of a little different than you would think. I mean, it, there's some. He's an enigma, Ben is, because there are times, as we'll find out, where he isn't uh, doesn't seem as mean or evil as you might think. It's definitely different. Yeah, it's been different for me just looking into at least the social information around Ben and then comparing that to like the social information in last season with Brad. And it's very, very different. Um and it does even Misty, you kind of hear her talking about it too. Well, I think this way, but we're also talking to some people and they're saying, you know what? He was actually pretty good to her, um, which I'm, I'm amazed by. I mean, that just, it sounds like a very kind of fair assessment. Like she's really trying to look at both sides of, of Ben and figure that out too. And yet you do, you do have people say that about 90% of what people say is, is bad about Ben. I've actually heard that, but... The thing is, is there are those people that what they observed, it, it wasn't, you know, that he treated her um, well. Yeah. Yeah. And Misty, Misty did bring up a good point. And as a, as a parent, especially a parent of a, a father of a daughter uh, who luckily isn't dating each yet, so I don't have to worry about that. But when she ha- brings home a boyfriend you know, I'm going to want to know what their background is, what kind of history they have. Have they broken the law, been involved in law, in breaking the law, that kind of thing. So, uh, and it sounded like Misty, she didn't like that, but was sort of willing to um, work around that and have an open mind. But at the same time, she's still concerned that he brought her to that place that she didn't know. So it sounds like she still holds him accountable for her going there. Yeah. Well, and as as we get further into the details of the season, I think we're going to find some very strong reasons why um, she's she's holding him accountable. We've got a lot more to get to. We are only getting started. Uh, everyone, remember, you can find all the information and links that you need for any specific episode together all in one place at www.3menandamystery.com. That's with the number three. Any feedback, corrections, or new details can be sent to us via email at 3men, that's with the number three, at 3menandamystery.com. Or you can reach out to us on Twitter. Our handle is at 3 men and a mystery, And you can find us on Facebook as well. Three Men in a Mystery is produced by John Lorden, Mike Morford, and Gray Hughes. Please rate us on the podcasting platform that you found us on and help us grow by telling your friends and family about us. On the next episode, this simple Friday afternoon barbecue party turns into an unbelievable weekend-long chain of unexplainable events, multiple locations, numerous witness accounts, truths, lies, and everything in between and eventually ends with Allison going missing. We hope you'll continue the investigation with us in episode two coming next Monday. I'm John Lorden. I'm Mike Morford. And I'm Gray Hughes. And we are three men and a mystery.